today we are going to briefly go over how to do the descriptive statistics of your data in R. This will include mean and median, as well as standard deviation and variance. So the first thing we want to do, of course, is open a new R script. And we're going to call this R script descriptive statistics. And so the first thing we want to do is we need to find some data that we want to describe. Uh, of course, the easiest one to use is the iris data set. And so we're going to go ahead and call that data iris. The next thing we want to do is take a look at the iris data itself, take a look at what the different column names are, what sort of data is in this data set. So names iris. And so we have things like sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and species. So what are we interested in? It doesn't really matter uh, right now because we are just playing around with the data, but uh, let's take a look at sepal length. So that's the first one, and that's good, good as any place to start. And so what we want to do is first we want to make a vector of the sepal length itself. So we don't have to keep typing iris dollar sign and all of that stuff. So we're going to call this SL, or sepal length. And we're going to say that sepal length is from the iris data set, and it is, of course, sepal length. If we run that and then run SL, now we just have a vector of the sepal length. So we have no other data from the iris data set, and we can just ignore the rest. So it's going to make our lives a little bit easier and make our code a lot cleaner. So we're going to set out the people. OK. And so descriptive statistics, we want to describe this data. We see there's a bunch of numbers, so some fives, some sixes, some 7.2s, a bunch of stuff, but there's really nothing really telling us just looking at the data. And so the first step, of course, before we do any equations, is to graph the data and take a look. And so we can use a histogram function. So call this the histogram of the sepal lengths. And so HIS function. And simply HIS SL, let's say color equals dark red. I kind of like the dark red color. We run that. And there it is. You can see we have SL on the x-axis, it's the sepal length, and then we have the frequency. All right, and so what can we see from this plot? So let's make this let's make this plot a lot bigger by dragging up and down. And if we take a look at this graph, we can start to see some patterns. So it looks like the distribution of sepal lengths is bell-shaped, and we can tell that because it is tallest in the center and shorter on either the left or the right side. We can also estimate the mean. The mean is, is of course, the average of all of the observations. And so if we took all of these observations together, it averages likely somewhere between 5 and 6.5. That is where the majority of the bars are. And so let's just write that down. Yes, mean is somewhere between 5 and 6.5. And so let's see if we're correct. We can actually calculate the mean. Now, if we remember the equation for mean, it is y bar, or sometimes written as x bar, equals the sum of all of the observations of y divided by the total number of observations n. And in R, we can do this a couple different ways. And I want you to try doing both ways. The first way is to calculate it all out manually. R 
in its simplest terms, is a glorified calculator. So we can just calculate the means using that equation. So, first thing we need to do is get a y. And of course, our y is the sepal length, right? That's our variable of interest. And so y, of course, is SL. You can skip this step and just use SL, but in this case, it makes it a little clearer that you're talking about y. We also need an n, right? We need the number of observations. And so one, one thing we could do is we could just go and count all of the observations of sepal length in this vector. But we don't have time for that. There's over 140 observations. And so what we can do is we can just ask R to calculate it for us. It's a computer. It can do it a whole lot faster. And the way that you do that is you use the function length. And this function is going to pull the length of your vector or the number of observations in your vector. So if we do length of y, first make sure to run y, and then n equals the length of y, and there it is. And so if we call y, there's our sepal length. And if we call n, there's 150 observations. So those are the two things we need to calculate mean. And so if we remember the equation, it's the sum of all of the observations divided by the number of observations. And so how do we get that number? So y bar equals, so we can pretend that this arrow is the equal sign in the equation, equals the sum, so that epsilon, and lucky for us, the function for sum is, of course, sum. So in that function, we want to get the sum of y. And then we want to divide by n. And so if you look at this equation here, that is almost indistinguishable from the equation I just showed you, uh, written out in math notation. And so if we run that, it calculates it for us, and then we can call y bar to see the output, and it is 5.843333. And of course, we don't want to report that full number. Instead, we want to use a reasonable number of significant figures. So here, since we measure to the nearest tenth of a millimeter, we will round it to the nearest thousandth of a millimeter. And so the mean is 5.843. There is an easier way to do this in R, and that is using the built-in mean function. So we can simply ask for the mean of our vector SL, and lo and behold, it's the exact same answer. When doing these calculations, I want you to try doing it manually first, and then checking your answer with the built-in function. The built-in functions are great, but a lot of stuff happens behind the scenes, and if you don't know exactly what's going on, you're more likely to introduce error or incorrect things into your analysis. So you need to make sure you know what's going on, even though there is an easier way to do it. Okay, so that's average, or mean. We also want to calculate median. What is the middle number? And so what we need to do first is we need to sort it either highest to lowest or lowest to highest. And the way we do that is we make a new vector. Let's call it SL sort. And we sort SL. And if we run SL sort, you can see that all the observations are sorted lowest to highest. When figuring out the median, it doesn't matter if the data is sorted lowest to highest or highest to lowest, because the middle will be the same. So now that we have this sorted out, we can figure out the median by looking for the number in the exact middle 
of this sorted list. First thing, we already figured out that there is 150 observations in this vector. And so halfway, or 150 divided by two, is 75. And so the median is the 75th number, either going from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. We can go and search for that. So if you take a look here, there are numbers down the left-hand side. These are the numbers that each of these rows starts with. So each of these observations are their own, have their own place. Um, but instead of fitting all of those numbers in there, it just gives us the first one of each row. And so here, 1 and 2, 3, 4, all the way down to 16. 31, 46, 61, 76. Okay, so you see 76, and so that's 5.8. We look at the number prior to that, 5.8, and that's 75. And so the, the middle number is 5.8, the median is 5.8. We can also check that by telling R to tell, it, to tell us what the 75th number is. They do that by writing SL, sort, and then in square brackets, we put the number 75. We run that, look at that, 5.8. And now, of course, there's a built-in function for this called median. And if we take the median and we just look at the original data set, SL, 5.8. We don't even need to do the sorting. R will do that for us. Now, mode, on the other hand, has no built-in function. And honestly, if you were to build a function here, it's a bit complicated for what we need. So instead, we can use a histogram. And so if we take a hist of SL again, equals dark red, though as you can see, the histogram is still up. I'm just gonna run a new one. Oh, it didn't change. If we take a look, we can figure out what the mode is based on how high the histogram bars are. And so our mode must be somewhere between 6 and 6.5. And so here we can look at the data. SL. We'll still look at SL sort. And it looks like 6.3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 6.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so it looks like 6.3 is our mode. What you can do is you can spend a little more time, check through the data, and pull that mode out. There are some ways of writing a function for a mode, and you can find those on Google, but I'm not so concerned about that in this class. Now, of course, there is a much easier way to do all of this in R, and that is using the summary function. And summary simply gives you the summary statistics. It gives you mean and median, it also gives you the quartiles, which um, we'll talk about a little bit, and it's a really great way to take a look at your data for the first time. And so we can simply do summary, SL, and here we have the minimum, which is 4.3, that's the lowest. We have the first quartile, which is 5.1, so that's the 25%. We have the median, 5.8, okay, that number fits, the same number we, we calculated. The mean is 5.843, look, the correct number of significant digits. Um, that's not necessarily always gonna be the case, but in this case, we got lucky. Third quartile is 6.4, and then the max is 7.9, and so we can use this information to calculate ranges, we have our quartiles, we have our mean and median, so it's all the summary statistics all at once. So summary is actually a really powerful function to know. Now the next thing we want to figure out is the variation in our data. And you can take a look at the range, okay, 4.3 to 7.9, this is 
here. That doesn't really give us a whole lot of information. The best thing to do is to calculate variance and calculate standard deviation. If we take a look at this histogram, you can see there is quite a bit of variation from the central area here. And so I suspect that our standard deviation and, and variance are relatively high. And so how do we calculate that? Well, we want to start with variance. The estimate for variance is S squared, and that equals the sum of all of the observations minus the average squared. And so this is the sum of squares divided by the number of observations minus one. And we do this n minus one because when analyzing data, we lose what are called degrees of freedom. Our total degrees of freedom equals the number of observations. But since we've already calculated a mean from these observations, we've lost one of our degrees of freedom. And so we represent that as n minus one. And so how do we do this in R? Well, we already have our observations, right? SL. We also already have our mean. We've already calculated that. So we can make a new item, mean SL. And mean SL is, of course, the mean SL. And if we check that number, Okay, that makes sense. 5.843333. We want to keep it at that number. We do not want to round it yet. This is an intermediate calculation at this point. So we don't, we want to leave the level of precision right where it is. And to calculate the variance, so we're going to call it S squared. Give it a little more space here. We are going to take the sum of SL, so all the observations of SL, minus mean SL, and the sum itself is the sum of squares, so we need to make sure that we square SL minus mean SL. We don't want to square after we've taken the sum. We want to take the square before. This is called the sum of squares. And if you notice, I use the little caret symbol to represent a exponent. And then we divide by n. We already have n from above, and that's 150 minus 1. So we're dividing the sum of squares by n minus 1, or by 149. And we also want to make sure that n minus 1 is in parentheses so that R doesn't think that it needs to divide by N and then subtract the whole thing by one. Orders of operation are really important and you need to make sure that your orders of operation are explicit. Because R really isn't that smart. And so if we run that and then take a look, the variance according to our calculation is 0 0.685, etc. Well, we can check that because, of course, there's a built-in function for variance called VAR. VAR, and then we just take the variance of SL and run that. Look at that, the exact same number. And so here we can also check our math, and we can also check that the built-in function in R makes sense. Of course, if we are going to round this, it will be 0.686. And then the last thing I want to do is calculate standard deviation. And standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. So we can take the SQRT, or square root, of SSQ. And of course, we can run that. And it's 0 0.8280661. Another way to do this is to use the built-in function SD, our standard deviation. And the standard deviation of SL is 0 0.828061.
you're more than welcome to do the long hand of standard deviation, but I find it easier if you just calculate the variance first and then just take the square root.